This is Dr. Flight. I hope you're doing well. Uh, we have a video, short video here that uh, talks a little bit about um, creating an ad, creating a message. Um, and specifically, I want to look at um, the, the idea of um, ad advertising execution. Um, then we'll also look at some follow-up, um, evaluating uh, ad effectiveness, just a couple concepts associated with that, um, and then um, just wrap up this idea of media campaigning with some regulatory bodies, um, some government agencies that will look at um, how we advertise and they will establish the rules that we use when we when we do advertise. Okay, so we're going to jump around a couple different topics then um, to kind of wrap up this this topic, this this concept of creating a media campaign. So again, if you kind of look at the media campaign process, we started with identifying the audience. Um, then we went into looking at objectives and budgeting, and then we started to look at uh, different elements of um, you know, kind of how a message is encoded. Um, we looked at um, some, some different things like appeals and, and some things like that. Um, different media we can put the message on. So now, now we, we got this idea where we're creating the ad. Um, and uh, so I wanted to s spend a second and talk about execution style. The execution style of a message deals with the tone, the style, the words, the format, as you can see, of putting together the advertising message itself. Now again, don't confuse this necessarily with an appeal. An appeal is this trigger that we use to get people interested in the ad um, or the message. We also have kind of an underlying message that we want to deliver that'd be like probably our unique sales or selling um, uh, pr proposition. Um, it may also be a call to action or something like that. So, so we have this idea that we want you to know something. We, we have information we want you to know. We want to get your attention so that you listen to it. Um, but, but now it's this idea of like, how are we actually going to uh, deliver the deliver the message and so um, execution style describes that process okay so it's the approach style tone words kind of the format we use for delivering the message itself and there's going to be um, I don't know six or seven or eight different uh, styles I guess um, and so we'll say like a word or two about each one and you can kind of get an idea that there's a ton of creativity, right, involved in doing this. We want to create an ad. It's a creative process. Um, I've mentioned this before. A lot of companies will outsource this process. So you may not have at your company the skills or the personnel to really do this. Um, but there are agencies out there that do all of this. And so um, it's oftentimes helpful to, to do this. So to do it, to, to outsource it. So number one, slice of life. A slice of life campaign is where we break into a person's daily routine and describe them and show them in their typical setting uh, as they're using your product. So it's kind of like how this product is used in the context in which it's used by a normal consumer. And we tell that story, right? Lifestyle shows how this product will fit specifically in a lifestyle of choice. Um, so this might be somebody has like an image of themselves or they have a way that they like to describe themselves, um, you know, from a lifestyle perspective. Um, and this is how this product applies to that life and supports the image that the consumer wants. So we have this big thing called self-image, brand image, congruity. And it's like when a person has a self-image and the brand's image matches theirs, then there's congruity, then they go together. And they're kind of the same thing where the product is positioned as having a personality or a lifestyle or an image of itself, and that matches an image that the consumer would also like to have, right? So lifestyle. Fantasy. So as you're using this product, the product takes you to um, a, a place that is fantastic, 
That's what fan fantasy is all about. That is surreal or unexpected, right? So it can be um, it, it, it can be theoretical. It can be esoteric. Uh, it doesn't have to be real, of course. Um, it's it's a place somewhere else. Okay, mood or image. Uh, we can create an ad that. Uh, you know, may tap on an emotion, right? So we talked about appeals earlier. If we extended the appeal into the execution of the ad um, and it was an emotional appeal, a hedonic appeal that deals with beauty or love or some type of sense of loss or whatnot, um, but an emotional type of, type of appeal may create a mood or set the image that we want a consumer to feel when they're using the product or in contact with the product itself. Okay, a um, few others, musical. Um, so when we have our audience, when we sing, when we sing a song and the song describes the product, we can do that. Personality symbol. Okay, so personality symbol is um, when we create a, a, um, a fictitious character, a creation, that represents, it's personified, that personifies our product. The um, Michelin Man for Michelin Tires, um, the green, Jolly Green Giant, uh, right? It's a big thing. Uh, so when we create a uh, Snap Crackle Pop for Rice Krispies, you know, these characters are all, um, you know, kind of these characters that are supposed to represent the product. Okay. Technical expertise or some technical element, element, also scientific evidence. And then we'll go ahead and throw in the last one here, which would include testimonials as well. So technical expertise, scientific evidence, um, and then uh, testimonials are all also different execution styles where we can describe the product um, and we can um, kind of build into those our unique selling propositions. Um, these three may also be associated more with utilitarian or hedonic appeals, uh, where there's fact-based elements that are, that are at play, and we want people to attend to those. We want people to take a logical approach to think about our product as opposed to an emotional approach. So these execution styles may go, may go with, with that. Okay, um, so these are different execution styles. Uh, there's also a storytelling one, which we don't list here, uh, but storytelling is another type of type of an execution style that that we might might also include. Okay, so um, when we think about this creativity, then uh, creating the ads, um, we talked about execution style. Execution style has to match our goals and objectives, kind of what we want to accomplish. Right, so they should be there should be some synergy there, um, and and also the execution style may be adapted a bit towards the type of medium we use. Um, so, for instance, if you do radio, you might do music, um, and that kind of makes sense that 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 you would that you would do do something like that. Um, you want to tell a story, or you want to create something uh, more kind of like a slice of life. Television might be effective. If you're doing something really technical, um, you might do a print ad that has some written words that people can read and take their time looking at. Um, so a lot of times, real technical products, we'll see like a magazine ad, for instance, that'll have information about that. Okay, um, a bit about creativity. Um, yeah, look, this is a creative process. You don't want to get too creative in the sense that the message is lost. So sometimes an ad is so funny that people forget what the ad's actually about. And you don't want to really get to that point. You know, you want it to be memorable, but you want to remember the message, not the fact that, you know, you were laughing so hard that, that you fell out of the seat, right? Um, so think about the effectiveness of the creative in delivering the message. Um, don't don't lose sight that the message has to be delivered, and and we want it to be acted upon at the end at the end of the day. Okay, so so again, creative advertising. Um, think of execution style. Number seven, last step here of the process uh, before we look at regulatory bodies. Um, three things. One is we want to know if our message is going to work before we spend our money. So before we spend our money, we have an 
a message, we have an execution style, we have like an advertisement that's been created. And what we'll actually do is we'll have maybe a series of advertisements and we'll test each one relative to our goal. So do we want to build awareness? Do we want to do a reminder ad? Do we want to do a persuasive kind of campaign? We'll test each, each of our ads that we've created and see which one achieves that goal best. That's called pre-testing. So pre-testing is a big deal in advertising. We always want to pre-test our instrument to see how effective it is before we spend the money, right, to, to actually do it. Uh, tracking. So a tracking study is something that we do actually a lot in research where we look at um, our marketing program as it's being executed. Now, we could track, for instance, distribution or our pricing, price sensitivity. There's a lot of things we could track. Certainly, we can track sales in relation to our advertising spend. So we have different amounts of money we're spending, and we would expect that the more we spend, the better the results or, or the more sales we have, right? Uh, or the more the awareness or whatever it is we're tracking. Okay, so a tracking study happens while the campaign is going on and it monitors the effectiveness of our spend while, while it's being executed. And that would be a tracking study. We could do that again, a tracking study in a lot of different scenarios, not just advertising, but um, in other marketing, you know, kind of, kind of tasks as well. Post-testing happens when we want to know the long-term effects of a, of a campaign. So what happens is a media campaign takes place and we look at the effects today and kind of as it's going on, um, but there are always lingering effects of an ad campaign. So even though you did the ad advertised messaging now, six months from now, there's still going to be an effect. So sometimes what we'll do is we'll take that pretest, um, like sales, a sales pretest, like a sales before the ad. So it's not a pretest. I shouldn't have said that, but sales before the ad, and then we'll compare it to sales after the ad. You know, we'll do like six months, nine months, a year later, right? And we'll compare and contrast that. And we'll also be able to see the diminishing effects of the ad as it extends longer into time. Okay, so post-testing then is a, a, a before and an after. Sometimes we call it an A-B test. Well, we do A-B testing and pre-testing as well. But it's, it's this idea that we're comparing the outcome before the ad and then after. Okay? All right, so finally, I'm just going to do this real quick, right? I want you to pause the video if you need to, all right? Um, there's going to be two screens, and there's going to be, um, I think it's five different agencies. The FTC, the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, um, helps enforce and create laws that, that protect the consumer. Okay, so if the consumer is involved... Um, and it deals with selling, advertising, you know, relating to the consumer, then often the FTC will be involved some way, making sure that um, the consumer is protected. Okay, the FCC protects communication, right? They regulate all the different forms of communication, especially electronic communication. Um, but they also kind of oversee this idea of what's, decent, I guess. So like obscenities, um, language, hate language, stuff like that, that might be found in advertising. Those are all things that might be regulated by the F FCC, the C federal communication. But, but again, when you talk about FCC, a lot of times, like if you, for instance, want to have a radio station and you need a frequency, the FCC is involved with giving you or assigning you a frequency that you can broadcast on. They control a lot of a lot of those things, okay? The FDA, Food and Drug Administration, when you look at product labels, the FDA is the is the agency that would look at that. Again, this is a consumer protection type of a type of a thing. Um, but truth in terms of what is in the product dealing with food, certainly. Um, medical uh, medical, medically associated um, elements. So if there's a new drug, it has to be 
what we call FDA approved. So it has to go through very, very, very strict testing and it won't be approved if it doesn't have those tests done. Um, so um, ingredients and in products is also something that's regulated. Um, and FDA also manages cosmetics. So any type of cosmetic, you know, makeup and such and um, those types of things, okay? So it's a broad, broad area, broad areas, I guess. The Postal Service, how about that? The, the USPO, um, maybe, maybe archaic, but like if you're mailing, mailing advertisements, then it's a federal agency that you're mailing advertisements through. If it's the F, if it's the if, if if it's the Postal Service, so making sure that 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 you're not you know kind of doing things the wrong way, uh, following federal law there, and then the Bureau of Alcohol, the ATF, firearms and explosives, um, alcohol, alcohol sales. Um, cigarette sales, those types of things. Um, so um, regulating those, making sure the regulations are um, followed and, and up to date and, and things, things of that nature. Go along with the, the, the ATF. All right, so, uh, so this kind of, oh, I forgot puffery. <laughs> All right, puffery is when we overstate something. Um, so let's say we're doing an ad and we overstate the results. Um, if we lie, then that's bad. If we say we're better than somebody else, we need to show some evidence of that. Um, and so, you know, maybe we have a study. Maybe we maybe we ask people and we ask their opinion. Hey, which product do you like better? They say you. It's like a testimonial, right? Um, so puffery is not illegal, um, but it can be misleading if you're not careful, right? So you've got to think about the impression you're giving without um, giving the perception that you're lying or that you're overstating unnecessarily kind of your benefits, right? So praise stopping short of deception uh, is kind of the, the key there. All right, define advertising execution and provide examples. So understand uh, we have like the delivery of the message is the execution and how we're going to deliver it kind of from a creative standpoint. Understand this idea of pre-testing an ad before it actually runs, tracking it, and then looking at the effects of the ad using post-testing. Post then finally, think of this, this area, these areas of um, government oversight, these regulatory bodies, understand and just kind of know each one of them. And then finally, this idea of puffery uh, being um, saying, saying you're good, saying you're, you got a great product, um, being careful not to cross the line of being deceptive. We don't want to do that. That's just not good. Um, plus you're violating rules and laws when you do that. So, and you open yourself up for lawsuits and nobody wants a lawsuit. So, all right, that's it. Um, let me know again if you have any questions. Um, and um, just take a look at the video a bit, pause where you need to, okay? Thanks.